Hey, what's up everybody? David Wood here for NoiseJunkies.net to bring you the fourth tutorial in my Teen Titans special effects series. In today's tutorial, we will be recreating the Sonic Blast from Cyborg's Sonic Arm. Here's what the effects look like in the show. It's got this bright core with these rings, and it varies in the show. Sometimes the core will be a pure blue, and sometimes the rings will be pure blue. Uh, this is usually how it looks. We're going to be creating something similar. Here's the result that I came up with. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up my image that I'm using. And you can do this simply on a black background and then set the blend mode on screen. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer above and I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to make a shape from the mouth of the cannon out in this direction. Generally, the beam kind of widens as it goes along. I don't want it to widen too much. And then kind of round it off at this end. And then link it back to select it. Then what we want to do is we want to come over to our Swatches tab. And if you don't have that open, you can find it under your Window menu. And we're going to fill it in with this pure cyan blue, like right there. Click on that. And then hold down Alt and hit Backspace to fill it with the foreground color. Make a new layer above that, fill that one in as well with the same color. The next layer we're going to fill in with light cyan, so a new blank layer, fill that one in. Make another new layer, fill it with that color again, and make another new layer, and we're going to fill it with RGB cyan up here at the top. Just like that. And then Control D to deselect the selection. And then we can turn these layers off and we'll blur them individually. Uh, first, though, you want to put them inside of a group. So we'll create a new group, and I'm going to name this Layers. And then you can select all the layers by holding down Shift and drop them into the layers. Okay, there we go. Now the bottom layer, we're going to go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we are going to blur this by 60 and hit OK. We'll turn on the next blue layer, hold down Alt, and under the filter menu you can just click the last used filter right here, Gaussian Blur, and it will bring up the options for that. We'll give this one a blur of 40 or 30. Again, depending on the size of your image, this will vary. We'll turn on the next layer, hold down Alt, click on Gaussian Blur, give this one a Gaussian Blur of 15. The next layer, we'll give this one a Gaussian Blur of either 10 or 6. Somewhere in between 5 and 10 will work best. And the top one, we won't blur that just yet. So there you have the base. It kind of looks like a lightsaber. Once we have that done, then we can go about creating the rings of the image. Now to create the rings, we're going to create a new layer, still inside the layer group. And we are going to uh, select the elliptical marquee tool by holding by clicking on M on your keyboard and we're just going to make a circle uh, about there. We don't want it to be perfectly round because then it would look like it was coming straight at us. We want it to look like it's at an angle. So try to match the roundness of the barrel and I'm going to fill that in with white. I can hit control and click backspace and then we'll go to select, modify, contract and we want to shrink the circle and I'm going to shrink it probably by seven or eight and you can try different amounts. I might do 10. Yeah, 10 looks pretty good. And I'm going to simply hit the delete key to remove the center of that. And then select, deselect. Now I can move this over to the front of the beam and just line it up so that um, it's even and it looks like it's in the center because otherwise it could be kind of off center and it doesn't look right. You want to just make sure that it's like that. And the next step is just to duplicate the layer, hitting Control J, and moving it further down the barrel, lining it up again, and then hitting Control T, and just scaling it down slightly. So in this case, probably 95. I've using this image before, 95 looked the best, I think. So just keep duplicating it making sure to center it again, uh, duplicate it again, move it further down, 
Control T, uh, change the size 95, and just keep going down the line. So I'm going to pause this and come back when I finish that. Okay, now that that's all done, we can either merge these layers together, or we can make them into a new group by selecting them all and duplicating them and then putting them in a new layer group inside that first group and we'll call this rings and we're going to duplicate the group uh, we might come back and edit them later and the rings copy we can right click and merge group just like that and then we can turn off the main rings group once we have those rings in place then we can uh, hold down the control key and click on the little thumbnail for that main core layer and it will make a selection and we're going to go to filters and we're going to go to select modify contract and we want to contract the edge by two pixels and then go back to the ring copy and we'll use the eraser tool and we're just going to erase inside of the circle on the correct side just like that because we don't want to see the ring on both sides we just want to see one side of the rings so just like that select deselect and now we can give the main core a slight blur so we'll bring up Gaussian blur again and we're going to give this a small blur of probably 1.5 or lower and hit OK we'll also blur the ring layer by the same amount just to soften that up actually we'll probably go lower and blur it by one looking pretty good so far next what we need to do is take the ring layer and duplicate it twice so hit control J twice and we'll take the top one turn it off and the middle one turn it off the bottom ring layer we're going to fill it in with that same blue that we f filled in the outer glow with so we want to choose pure cyan blue. Make sure to lock the layer alpha first. Fill that like that. The second layer, lock the alpha, and we're going to fill it in with the light cyan. And once we do that, we can turn off the alpha locks, and we'll blur these layers. So the t bottom one, we're going to go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur again and we're just going to blur this we don't want anything too extreme uh, probably between 8 and 10 I'm going with 10 second layer bring up the Gaussian blur and blur this one by 5 and then we can turn the main uh, one back on. Now we don't want to see the glow on the inside of the core like that because it looks kind of strange. So what we'll do is we're going to move the main core layer above those two layers to hide it on the inside. And already it's beginning to take effect and look like our other, like the original example. And the last thing we'll do is we'll take the main core layer and we'll lock the alpha. And we're going to choose white as our foreground color and choose our gradient tool make sure to select the foreground to transparent gradient going in a straight line and we're just going to stroke up the barrel a little bit and we can close our layers group and then we'll just duplicate the group and the second one we're just going to merge it into one group and from here you can play around with blend modes if you want or you can leave it on normal and um, to help the edge here blend in better what you can do is create a new black layer and then apply a lens flare to it by going to filter render lens flare 
and I like to use 105 millimeter prime. I think that's the coolest flare. And movie prime looks pretty cool. Uh, sometimes you can combine them. And I'm just going to place that like that, set the blend mode on screen, and then I can just move it over. And of course you can play with the position of that to f make it fit better. And then just go into the curves under the blue and increase that. Green, bring that up a little bit. And the red, bring that down. And then just add a dramatic curve to the RGB like that. And now you've got a flare which helps to hide the edge and just makes it look pretty insane and much more powerful. So, that's it for this tutorial. I'm David Wood, David Wood FX for NoiseJunkies.net and I will see you guys next time.